All right. Um, let's continue to take the second order derivative. And we're going to be extra careful because it's just difficult to get everything correct. Uh, if, but if we pay 100% um, attention, we really focus, maybe we can get it right. So let's look at the derivative of fy with respect to x. And then we have a product rule over here to apply. And this is what we're going to have. Um, so take the derivative of the first factor. We're going to have just x, right? Okay, and then times the second factor, we have 12 minus 2xy and minus y squared over um, x plus y squared, right? And then we're going to take the derivative of the second term. The first term is just x squared over 2, right? When we take the second part over there, we're going to actually using, again, the product rule instead of the quotient rules. So we have a, a smaller degree for x plus y. So we have 12 minus 2xy minus y squared. Take the derivative respect to x. And that means we can have exactly negative 2y left. And then we have x plus y to the negative 2. All right, and then we keep this term 12 minus 2xy minus y squared. And then the derivative of x plus y to the negative 2 is negative 2 x plus y to the negative 3. Okay, and then we plug in x is 2 and y is 2, right? And we know that this will be 0. And we also know this is going to be 0. So again, we only need to do the middle part. So um, at x is equal to 2, y is equal to 2, f y of x is going to be equal to 4 over 2. And then negative 4 is from, the, from over here. Uh, from over here. And then we again have 4 squared. And that's going to be 2 times negative 4 over 16. And we see this time we have negative one half. Okay. And there is no doubt um, that now we're going to be able to find D. D is fxx times fyy minus fyx squared. And that's going to be negative one squared minus negative one half squared. And that's one minus one over fourth and 3 over 4, that's positive. So we have fxx is negative, and d is positive. So um, 2, 2 is a local maximum. And since from the context, it is clear that since this is only 1, since it is the only critical value um, we know it is also the sometimes it's a global sometimes we say absolute maximum absolute um, maximum and we can also find z when x is equal to 2 y is equal to 2, we know z is going to be equal to, um, we have the formula back over here is um, going to be 1. All right, z is going to be equal to 1. Okay, um, I think that's all we want to have. And then um, we're going to have the volume over here is equal to x times y times z, that's going to be 4 um, cubic meters. That ends our computation for this second example.